Hey there, we are going to create a pretty cool image composite in Photoshop today. It's not that difficult to do, but the tutorial is definitely intermediate level because we're going to kind of breeze over some things, but you're going to learn a lot and I think you're going to love it. This video is sponsored by our good friends over at Squarespace. You can check out the link in the bio, but we'll talk a little bit more about them later. For now, let's get this thing started. Well, the whole thing begins here in Photoshop and here is what we're going to create. We're going to begin with just this photo of San Francisco. It's an aerial shot of San Francisco and we are going to transform it into what you see here and I'm going to walk you through all the steps. So let's get started with it right away. Uh, you take a background image and by the way, these are all stock photos. They are Adobe stock that we're using. So they are pay stock photos. Um, I can link them in the description, but you really can do it with any photos that you like. Uh, just the concept and the principles that remain the same. All right. We have our image here and I am going to go filter, blur gallery and choose field blur. And here in the field blur dialog, I'm just gonna make a couple changes. In fact, I know exactly what I want. So I'm gonna check off preview just so we can make these changes quick. And then I will unpreview to show you uh, what I'm doing here. So I'm going to field blur this, not 50, 20 pixels. I'm going to create 50 pixels of light bokeh and we're going to go 100 for the uh, bokeh color. And then the light, uh, the light range, excuse me, we want this to just kind of attack the very brightest parts of the image to give all the little speckles in the windows of the buildings and things like that, uh, the bokeh. So I'm gonna push this up to like, I don't know, 230 to 255, just the very brightest parts of the image. Let's turn on preview and see what we've got. It'll take a second to boot up and you can see it's just some nice sparkly stuff. Yeah, is it a little overcooked out here in the sky? Yes, uh, it's just something that this blur doesn't do that well when it comes to introducing bokeh, but look at how amazing the rest of it looks. So we could take the time to smooth that out. We're not going to, but we could. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and we now have the initial stage of our background. The next thing I'm going to do is drag in just a concrete floor, an image of a concrete floor. Uh, this doubles as having smoke as well. Uh, we could use a separate smoke stock photo. We're going to roll with this. So I'm just going to drag this over into my document. It's massive. It's huge. So I'm going to zoom out quite a bit and we can go edit free transform right there and just scale this way down. So I'm going to scale it down until it just kind of fits. So maybe something like that is good. I can zoom back in here. That's just command or control and the plus minus keys are the zoom in and out, by the way. All right. So something like that looks good. I will uh, commit that. Maybe I'll move it down a little bit. I'm always non-committal when it comes to exact positioning. You know how it is. Sometimes I'm going to commit that change there. All right. I'm going to name this uh, concrete or something like that, just so I uh, always have it in the front of my mind what it is, although I can see what it is, whatever. Uh, now I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to make a selection of everything above my concrete floor. So something like that. Now there is a slight curve to the concrete floor. I'm not concerned about it being exact. It just kind of has to be good enough. Uh, and we're going to go select modify feather to just just feather the edge of this selection maybe we'll go like ooh three pixels it just has to be very small and by the way we're not going to apply the effect of the canvas bounds so it's just going to feather this bottom edge we'll hit okay and now we need to perform the cut to new layer so that's command shift j that's new layer via cut technically is what photoshop calls it and i'm going to name this layer smoke and now we have our smoke up here and we have our ground plane. Most importantly, we now have what can pretend to be the top of a building overlooking San Francisco. So we're building up our composite. I'm actually gonna drag the smoke beneath my concrete. I'll turn the smoke on. There's a lot of dark stuff here and a lot of light stuff. We wanna keep the light stuff. So typically the blend mode that's gonna work for you is screen. And now we have this nice smokiness uh, behind our image. There is this little bit of funky uh, area of pixels that got cut out. So we'll nudge the smoke downward. Just use the move tool and then use your down arrow keys. Now you can see this is creating this sharp line across the top. We could throw a mask on this, but to be honest, the smoke layer is kind of a throwaway layer. I'm not super concerned about it. So I'm just going to grab my eraser tool and this is really breaking a lot of rules. But you know what? You know the rules so you know what and when you're breaking. Uh, so we're going to just have a massive brush and no heart very soft and I'm just going to erase away the top of my smoke just like that uh, and there we have we've blended in the smoke nicely we could blend if the smoke as well but it looks pretty good uh, I will just reduce the opacity maybe a little bit just to give it some haze give it some atmosphere and give it sort of some middle ground depth as well 
Okay, next we're going to select our concrete layer and we're going to add one of these guys, the vibrance adjustment layer, and we're going to clip it. So we're going to hit this little icon right here, clip it to the concrete layer below, and I'm just going to boost the saturation like plus 65. I want to bring out some of that blue in the concrete, right? You see that there's a lot of bluishness in our San Francisco scene. We just want to boost that in our concrete ground. All right, well, let's take a quick break here and thank our sponsor. That is Squarespace. I've had my personal photography site with Squarespace for years. It's awesome. I love it. It's so easy to edit it, update it, make changes. It's a mobile-friendly uh, system, so your uh, website's going to look perfect on a phone, on a tablet, or on the desktop, no matter where people are viewing your site. They've got amazing templates as well. You can choose, build your site so quickly, so easily, and actually have it looking pretty good. They've got this great email campaign tool you can use to market your website. Basically, they just make building an online store or a website, blog, you name it, whatever you want to use your website for. That's what I'm trying to say. They make it all incredibly easy. You can sell the stuff you make or you can write articles or do whatever you want with your website. Check out squarespace.com slash tutvid. Download your free trial when you're ready to launch. Again, squarespace.com slash tutvid. Use the coupon code T-U-T-V-I-D. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for helping support this channel. We do love you very much. Let's get back into the video. And now I'm going to place a fence along the edge of my building. So this is going to require me to go back in. And I've got this seamless fence stock photo. I'm going to drag this into here. And I'm going to go back to my adjustments. I'm going to drag this into here. And I'm going to hit uh, Edit Free Transform. And we are going to scale this down. I want the fence to be kind of short. Like I want it to be there so it looks right. But I also don't want this giant chain link fence. So I'm going to go with just this small guy like that. And go ahead, hit Enter or Return. And then I'm going to zoom in. And with my move tool, I'm going to hold down the Alter Option key and drag out a copy of this. And I'm just going to click it right to the previous fence. Now, there is a one pixel gap. So I'll tap with my left arrow key and just push it together. There we go. I'm going to repeat that now and just create a fence that spans across my entire uh, building here. All right. Now, here we're at the end. Voila. I'm going to zoom out. I've got my fence. It looks awful because there's all that white around it. But let's clean this up. So what we'll do here is hold down shift and select all of those uh, fence layers and then hit command or control E to merge them together. And then we're just going to go with the multiply blend mode, which leaves the dark and gets rid of the light. And it's looking good, sort of. Uh, we do want to reduce the opacity to maybe like 50% because it is going to become more pronounced as we add more elements and things like that. Again, we want it to be there, but almost not be noticeable. It'll be noticeable if it's not there, but we don't want it to be really noticeable even though it is there, that kind of thing. Now, we're going to name this layer fence because the, the layer name is ridiculous and long. We're going to duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, and I am going to once more go Edit, Free Transform. I'm actually going to zoom in for this. I'm going to hold down my Shift and Alt key. Uh, it'll be Shift and Option for those of you. Uh, uh, Shift Option for me on the Mac. Shift Alt for those of you on the PC. Just crunch it way down and make it small like this. Uh, and just drag it down beneath the, the rest of the fence. Something like that looks good. And I may boost this back to 100% opacity. I'm going to do that. And then we'll go filter. And I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to blur this until it looks good. Like 35 pixels, way too much. Maybe like three. Three is probably about right, actually. So I think I'm going to roll with three. And I may actually crush this a little more. So that's just edit free transform. And I'm going to hold down my option and shift keys and just crush it a little bit more and move it so it just overlaps the bottom of the fence just a little bit. So we have just a nice little shadow there beneath our fence. And at this point, if you want it, of course, you can reduce the opacity of that a little more. You could blur it a little more if you think it needs a little more blurring. Just whatever you think it needs according to your taste. I'm actually going to punch the opacity back up. There we go. Next, we want to add our model to the scene. Now, the model comes from this stock photo. Now, instead of creating a tutorial within this tutorial and teaching you how to extract the model, I actually have a version of her extracted already in the finished image, and I'm just going to drag her right over. There's the model. I can just Command or Control C to copy the layer, and boom, Command or Control V to paste her in place. I'm going to drag her down. She has a little bit of shadow stuck underneath her shoe, but I kind of like that. We're going to have to build out a shadow for her anyway, um, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's Let's just move her over, kind of, I'm sort of aligning it so the little ponytail in the back of her head aligns with kind of the top of that building, you know, the top portion of that building, I should say. Something like that will probably work pretty well for us. 
So I'm going to close these two stock photos because I'm finished explaining and in the case of the concrete floor, using it. Uh, but what we have here is this is uh, I, I did another tutorial using this exact example, this composite, these images uh, where we need to blend the images. We need to blend the brightness and contrast. We need to blend the saturation and we need to blend the overall uh, color tint, color balance, color shift, if you will, in the image. And this is the technique. Now, I have a whole tutorial dedicated just to this, but we're going to blow through it really quickly right now. But if you need more help and understanding, I'll try to remember to link up in the top corner of this video, uh, a link to that video as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead first and add a, a black and white adjustment layer. So make everything black and white. And actually, before I do that, I always forget to do this. Uh, I like to find a dark point and a light point on both model and background. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool. I'm going to shift click here on the absolute brightest point there on the back of her thigh. And then I'm going to pick a pretty bright point in the background. Now, I don't want to just say, oh, well, the brightest part is this blown out solid white section in the sky because I know that's not right. Um, the highlight on the back of her thigh is probably going to be about 80% brightness. So I know probably like up over here, that's probably about 80% brightness, something around there. And I'm going to hit my little eyedropper and I'm going to say, show me this in HSB so I can see just hue, saturation and brightness. So we can see brightness adjustments we have to make. And actually this, this turns out this is a bad place because that's actually darker than her thigh. And I think her thigh needs to be brighter. So let's try to find a brighter area, maybe the edge of some bokeh or something like that. And that's telling me that's 100%. So in the high 90s. For our brightness b stands for brightness that that's about right that's probably about what this needs to be and then let's find a shadow so we'll go with the front of her thigh here and we're going to set this to hsb and then sort of the dark side of one of these buildings so i'm going to go with like the dark side of that building there and if i go hsb we can see 21 and 53 so we're going to have to push this around a little bit and see what happens but when we add a black and white adjustment layer this gives us kind of a, a no frills look man the image is just too dark. Let me collapse info here and just tuck it up here, right? She just, you can just tell she's too dark when you're not distracted by the color. So how do we fix this? Well, we select the model, uh, the model layer and we add, you can add your choice of whatever adjustment layer you like to keep things simple. I'm going to go with levels. I normally use uh, curves, but levels works fine as well. We're going to clip the levels down to the model. And we're going to be now begin the process of brightening her up. And this is where I like to bring back info just to reference it as I kind of work through this. So I'm going to say, all right, we're number one, we're going to make her brighter until it kind of looks right to me. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to bring up the blacks a little bit uh, because not only are we adjusting brightness, by the way, we're also adjusting contrast, right? If she had, if she was the correct brightness, but she was this contrasty against a background that was that not contrasty, well, we might have the brightness level correct, but the contrast isn't correct. So we want to, we want want to strike that balance between getting the brightness and the contrast correct uh, in this uh, in this section or this part of the process. And look what we've got. The second column of numbers is our new numbers. We're interested in the brightness. So brightness is 99%. Brightness is 99%. Great. Over here for the shadow, brightness is 49%. Brightness is 53% for the background. That's pretty close. That's close enough. Uh, and I like it. So I'm going to roll with that. We can now select and get rid of our black and white layer. We've adjusted the the brightness level and we can see there's before curve or levels and there's after levels. The next step is for saturation. We need to create what's called a saturation mask and we're going to do this with a selective color adjustment layer. Now I have a preset for saturation mask um, and this is where you just you reduce all your colors, the black percent to negative 100 and the white neutral and blacks you boost the black to 100%. Again, I cover this in the other video and you just creating a, a, a preset for it here is the easiest way to quickly be able to do this for future uh, projects and things you're working on. Now to adjust a saturation, hue saturation works really well for this. So I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to clip it to the stack of layers beneath. And here I like to use the scrubby finger. So basically if there are areas that are very bright. If we shut off the selective color adjustment, the brighter the area, the more saturated it is. See like her little pink running undergarment, very, very saturated and very, very bright. But her shirt, which is basically gray, very, very dark. So the shirt might actually be a little darker than the background, therefore less saturated than the background, but her legs, her skin in general is brighter than the background. So we know that she's too saturated. So I'm going to grab this finger scrubby tool, select the side of her leg here to grab most of those reds and just desaturate kind of until she begins to blend in. And I may take the shirt and try to boost the saturation a little bit, but it is also gray. So we have to kind of know what we're working with there. If I shut off selective color, you can see there's before our hue saturation layer and there is after. She already 
is looking like she's blending in a lot. So we're just reducing that saturation there and we're targeting, you can see mainly stuff here in the red channel. So using the finger scrubby, it allows you to very, you know, kind of generally target the color channels that you need to change. And of course, adjust that saturation to exactly what works based on what we're seeing with our uh, color or saturation mask. Now, last but not least, we want to just match the color tint, and we're going to do that by adding a solid color adjustment layer. It's a really solid color fill layer, I should say, and this is going to be just a 50% gray. So I'm going to go all the way down to white, and I'm going to set the brightness to 50% right there and hit OK, and then I'm going to set this to the blend mode luminosity. So now what we can see is, uh, it's, just, it's a little complicated to explain exactly what's going on here, but basically we can see that she's got a lot of red and maybe a little bit of green in her skin, whereas the bulk of the image has this blue tint, right? So we just kind of want to make the figure of her blend in as much as possible. And you can do this any way you want. If you are comfortable with the color channels and levels and curves, go for that. In this case, to keep it simple, I'm just going to go color balance. Again, I'm going to clip it to the layer stack and I'm going to begin in the midtones. I'm going to say, look, give me some cyan in there. Give me some blue in there. So she's already starting to change the color. Let's take a little bit of that green out of there. Let's go to the highlights. Uh, the highlights, we know we want those to be a little more blue, not too blue. You don't want to go overboard with it uh, because you can start to make her look pretty bad. See if I go super red, see how red she becomes, right? So we'll go a little cyan there. If I go too magenta, she becomes too magenta. If I go too green, she becomes too green. So we're just looking to strike the happy, happy balance in there. And then for the shadow, here's where I'm going to look. Does she need a little more blue? She doesn't need too, too much here. Maybe a little kiss of green in the shadows, if anything. And this is all just going to be, as you push and pull it around, what looks right and what kind of blends in. So we can see there's before the color adjustment, there's after. You can see how much more she has adapted to this image just using those three adjustment layers, those three techniques. And like I said, I have another video on exactly what was going on there and how to better color match and blend your, uh, your composites together. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And honestly, the more time you take and tweak it and go over it, we're going to just stick with our result here. It's close enough. Um, there are some things that I will probably tweak and adjust a little bit, uh, but I'm going to roll with this for now. We do want to go ahead and create the shadow for the ground. So here's how we're going to do that. Uh, I am going to go back to the original model layer and I'm going to shift click the mask to shut off the mask. And we're going to try to grab the bulk of the shadow here off the ground. And I'm just going to kind of do it very roughly using the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to drag a selection over it kind of, kind of like that. I'll probably take more than I need. And again, we'll go layer. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not layer, select, modify, feather, and we'll feather this, ooh, probably a good eight pixels. We want to get some good feather on there, and we want to copy this up. So with the layer selected, so I get the white tick marks around the layer, I'm just going to hit Command or Control J, and it's going to pop this layer up. It messes everything up because now uh, all of these adjustment layers are clipped just to our ground plane. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, and I'm going to hover between my new shadow layer and the original model layer, holding down Alt or Option, and just reclip it in the stack. So now everything is just passing right through, and we'll call this shadow. And that's not really going to work because then this is going to be clipped just within our mask. I'm going to drag the shadow up on top of everything. Maybe I should actually drag it beneath everything. And there's our shadow there finally showing up. And we're going to mask this in a number of ways. We want to just be very aware that the colors are going to be slightly different. So we just want to do our absolute best to just keep the shadow. So let's begin here by seeing what we can cut away. Number one, what does it look like if we use the multiply blend mode? Answer, it looks pretty bad. What if we double click on the layer, open up layer styles here, and we use our blend if sliders? What does this look like? What if we get rid of the bright stuff from the underlying layer by alt clicking and dragging that slider? We can sort of get rid of, get rid of some of the stuff. That's actually not too bad and maybe if we get rid of even the lighter stuff from this layer too what does that look like something like that's not horrible you can definitely still see a noticeable kind of swooping circular uh, circular shape but not too bad so at this point we can add a, a mask to this use our brush tool I'm going to right click and just get a nice big soft edged brush maybe a little bit bigger than that and I'm just going to paint with black and I'm just going to touch up these edges and just blend it together uh, by hand. Whatever looks good. Try to definitely get rid of that circular vibe that's going on there. And we can see there's before the mask, there's after the mask. Maybe I'll get rid of some of this back here. 
uh, just because it doesn't quite match what we have going on texture wise, something like that. That's pretty decent. And we do want to make that shadow a little bit stronger, but what copying the shadow up is doing is it's giving us sort of a template or a guide that we can follow when we create our, maybe we'll call it the real shadow. So let's create a new layer here and I'm going to call this shadow underscore two, if I can spell shadow correctly. There we have it. And I'm going to grab that brush tool again. I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller. I'm going to hit the letter D just to make sure my foreground and background color are black and white. And I'm going to click and add a few dots. Maybe I'll add a couple bigger dots, something like that. Very cool. And we're going to stretch this out now. So we're going to go edit free transform. And I'm just going to stretch this right out to the side. I'm going to hold down shift to get rid of that constraining of proportions, something like that. And then I'm going to hold down alt and shift again to really flatten it out like that. And now we want to blur this to add some realism to it. So we're going to go filter blur and we're going to go with a motion blur. Motion blur just has a really cool way of working with stuff like this, but we need a bit more distance than 50. Let's try maybe 500. What does that look like? Maybe more like 900, something like that. That's kind of cool. We'll hit okay. We can see there's before there's after. Now I'm going to hit uh, edit free transform one more time and we hold down alt and shift. I'm going to crunch that down a little bit more and I might shift it back a little bit toward her back leg like so. And then just reduce the opacity of this a little bit. And to ensure that it matches the texture of the ground, like right now it's slightly softening the ground around her feet. And the reason it's doing that is because there's no texture on our shadow. So we're going to go filter noise, add noise, and 10 is a little bit too much. You can see it's given us a lot of white speckles. We don't want that. It's also, by the way, given us white speckles because we do have white as our background color. Let's try five, see what that looks like. That's good enough. That'll just give it enough to help it blend a little bit. Um, and reduce the opacity maybe a little bit more just so it soaks up some of that blue color from the ground. And of course, we could duplicate our shadow, hold down alter option and drag it up into the layer stack just to get some, see how it just went onto the front of her shoe there. So there's before where her shoe is pretty well lit and there it is now. And maybe I would boost the opacity of that part back to 100 just to really darken up that part of her shoe. And now as I'm looking at this, uh, what we have is an image where she is, let me get rid of these eyedroppers. By the way, you can get rid of eyedroppers by just shift clicking and dragging them off the, uh, off the canvas. Just drop them out there and they are gone. Get rid of the info panel and that annoys stuff is gone but we're looking at an image where she is being lit from behind like this but all the light is on the ground in front of her and all the smoke that's lit up is also in front of her so i think we should go back here select that concrete ground and the smoke i'm shift selecting both of those layers go edit transform and let's just flip these horizontally so we're just going to flip that around so she's kind of running into the dark now at this point you sort of look the front of her body looks a little bit too lit up so we could go back and adjust that a little bit we go levels and just say you know what uh, let's tone back some of that brightness she is after all running into the dark part of the image and the just the back side of her should be lit up the way it is so probably something like that might be nice maybe reduce the output boost on the darker part although i don't know if i like that something like that maybe will help her uh, fit a little bit more or we could could even go so far as saying, hey, background, we're going to just based on personal taste, this is breaking our rules and stuff before, add a levels adjustment for the background and just brighten up the background a little bit. Um, which is going to kind of set the balance, the, the balance of the image off a little bit, but we'll keep an eye on this little levels adjustment back here uh, for later because we want to get to the good stuff, adding those uh, colored streaks and, and whatnot. And that's what we're going to do right now. So here's how I create these, these colored streaky things without using brushes or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to call this streaks and we are going to number one, make sure our foreground and background color are black and white. Then we're going to go filter. We're going to say, Hey, render clouds fill up this new layer with clouds and then filter render difference clouds once we have those clouds. And then we're gonna go filter blur motion blur. We want, we want a lot of motion blur because we want this to be pretty smooth. So we're going to go with maybe like 1100. Let's push it a little further than what it is now and hit OK. And then I, I want this to be something that appears kind of uh, solidly, if you will, when I go and make a screen blend mode. See how this just makes the whole image look hazy? I want this to appear like streaks. So we need to increase the contrast. We're going to go image adjustments and we're going to apply a destructive levels adjustment. Destructive meaning it's not an adjustment layer. Once we do it, it's set in stone. I'm going to boost the blacks up and I'm going to boost the whites all the way up as well. I don't want it to get kind of chunky like this. That looks bad. I want it to be nice and smooth and looking good. So there we go. Something like that. It is because we're working in an 8-bit image. You 
are going to get a lot of that kind of stepping and uh, banding type stuff. We're, we're going to try to pretend like that's not existing right now. Uh, but there we go. We have that. And now when we set this to the screen blend mode, we have this crazy thing going on where we have all this streaky stuff uh, that looks kind of cool. All right. Now here's where the magic starts to happen. We go edit. We go free transform. Hold down shift. So we're not constraining proportions and we're going to just bring it down to the top of her head and then we're going to bring this from the bottom up to the bottom of her foot and then maybe we'll just slide this back a little bit. So it's kind of aligned with her front hand, right? Something kind of like that is cool and we could, let me commit that change, we could... Uh, I'm going to hit Commander Control T to jump back into free transform that quickly. I could decide, you know what, I want this to end here or I want to boost it up, whatever. I'll probably leave it like that. But at this point, you can look and say, you know what, there's just too much white. Uh, it's too, again, it's looking kind of too hazy. I'm sort of getting the streaky effect, but a little too hazy. So let's go... Uh, image adjustments and bring up levels once more and what we're going to do is just increase the blacks so the blacks are going to add a little bit more space between where our white streaks begin and end so that looks kind of cool and maybe to top this off we can try to add another motion blur because we're just going straight across whoop not quite that much though we're going to go blur we're going to say motion blur and i'm thinking maybe not a thousand maybe like five five fifty something like that you can see it's going to clean up some of the edges for us. Just give a little bit, I don't know, it just makes it look a little bit more organic. And that's really what I'm going for. All right, now here's where we add kind of the waviness of this effect. Again, we go edit, transform. We could go free transform, but you can get to it in one click here. Transform and choose warp. Now, this is where I decide what direction this all flows. So for the first part of this, I want this sort of to flow up off of her body. And by the way, I am noticing we got something going on in the background there. We'll, we'll check that out in a minute. I want to kind of pull this up, right? Because I want it to sort of come off of her, the back of her head as though she's running and she's, you know, just racing through here, exerting all this energy, you know, all this power. And she's got this energy that's just flowing off of her from the bottom of her back foot, right? All the way up to the top corner of the frame, just kind of something like that. Maybe I'll bring this over a little bit so it's kind of passing through the front foot as well. This is all totally personal taste. Whatever you think looks good and works, just roll with it. There's no real right or wrong here. Um, it's just some things do look better than others, but a lot of that's just going to be a matter of you playing with it until you find something that looks cool. Then we commit the change and we have our first set of what will be colored streaks. But before we get distracted with that, let me just fix whatever's going on in the background here. I have a feeling it's when we flipped our smoke. I think it is. I'm just going to shift click both concrete and smoke, and I'm just going to use my move tool. I'm just going to nudge them over to the left. It's going to be all right. And if I need to, if you can't get it exact, you can always cheat and go free transform, hold down shift, and just pull it a little bit wider. Again, it's a composite. You're playing with reality. A couple pixels here or there, you just stretch it out. It's going to look fine. There we go. We corrected that issue. All right, back to the colored streaks. So what we want to do now before we do anything else is create our mask because we really want these streaks to be coming off the back of her. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to command or control click the mask that's applied to her layer right there. Command or control click. And I am going to apply a layer mask to the streaks that knocks away all the stuff in that selection. Ignore what's going on back here. That's We don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, we're going to hold down alter option and click to add a layer mask. And you can see the part I said to ignore, uh, it actually is kind of messing us up. So we're going to grab a rectangular marquee tool, drag a selection over that, and just fill it with white just so we're seeing all of that back there. All right, so we've got her selected. All the streaks are off of her. But what we now need to do is use our brush tool and go in and pick like this long thing coming off the front of her head. Does that really need to be there? So I'm going to make sure I'm working on that layer mask. I'm going to paint with black and just make that go away. Maybe this stuff here next to her face will have stuff coming off of her hands. But do we need all that? Is that a little bit too bright coming off the back of her shoe there maybe? It should just be that big swath right there. And then here for the back of her body, we're going to grab the brush tool, but we're going to flip our foreground and background color. We're going to paint with white, and we're going to overlay the back part of her body so it kind of looks like those streaks could be coming out of her arms, not just from the back of them. So here, too, with the front of her hand, we're going to bring streaks right through there. Something like that is kind of cool. And the back of her leg here, because there's going to be a lot of power, you know, a runner. You're going to have a lot of power through your thighs, your hamstrings, your glutes, all that. So there we go. Something like that is kind of cool. Maybe I'll just tone back the brightness of the, the one here that's coming off the back of her head. Just to kind of tell that to calm down a little bit. And there we have it. Something sort of like that.
And at this point, we colorize. So we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer and we're going to clip it to the streaks. So we're going to use our little clip option. I'm going to tick on colorize. And here's where we need to be careful because we want the color to be very, very bright. So we're going to say brightness, just go a little dark, maybe like 10 uh, minus 10 or so. And I'm going to boost saturation way up and then I'm going to choose the hue. So maybe I'll go with like, uh, I'll go with a bit of an RNG, an RNG heading in the direction of red color. That's kind of neat. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit darker, will darker look good. Do I want to go darker? Man, yeah, maybe I'll stay bright. I'm just going to stick with about negative 10, something like that's cool. And again, if, if the streaks are too much, you select that streak layer, you hit command or control L, or you just go image adjustments, uh, levels. And you can say, Hey, look, uh, we really need more blacks in the image. We need to make those, those streaks just tone down a little bit, or maybe you want more in which case you can boost it way up. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of probably leave it a little bit the way it is, maybe boost the, the lift the blacks a little bit. And then at this point we duplicate this process. So I take the streaks layer and I could command or control J to duplicate, but I'm going to hold down alter option and just drag it up above this. And I'm going to de-link it from the layer mask. So we don't change our layer mask. We have her masked and these streaks flowing around her. And then I go edit, transform, warp. And here I can say, you know what? I also want stuff that's coming down away from her this way in this almost like this energy is swirling out of her and heading toward the camera, something like that. I'll boost it this way. I'll pull down into her front leg a little bit more. I'll tuck this back on the top half. So it's sort of coming out of her front shoulder rather than the back of her head. And we'll bring it down a little bit lower, something like that. And I'll commit that change. And of course you can tweak and adjust the mask all you like. I'm not going to here for the sake of saving time. And we add another hue saturation adjustment layer. We clip it to that streaks layer. And now we can choose how we want to colorize this. So this could be a totally different color. We could go with like a blue. We could go with more of a pink. Maybe I'll go with like orange and pink. That kind of works. I think that's what I did in my uh, composite uh, or my, my sort of the one that I showed you a minute ago. And we have these really subtle, not really subtle, but, you know, very smooth, I guess I should say, uh, light streaks that are shooting off of her. Now they're a little bit too smooth. They don't have any texture. How do we add a little bit of texture easily? Well, we go filter, noise, add noise, and we just add a little bit of noise, not too much. Maybe like 3% is probably fine. Let's grab our second layer of streaks and go filter, and we'll just add the same amount of noise just like so. So now at this point, it's all about how much you want to continue building out this effect. One thing you could do, add a new layer. Let's call this glow or glows or whatever. And we set this to like color dodge and we just choose from our colors here. Let's just go with like a, a, a nice orange. And since pink is the other color, we'll go with like a deep magenta color, something like that. And we grab our brush tool and we just paint like a pink dot there. Now that's way too big. So let's go with like a little pink dot there right here off the back of her shoe where we have that pink uh, wave thing popping through. And then we go with the orange color, maybe add like a pop of orange energy back there and there, and maybe a little one here on the back of her shoe, right? So you got these like glowing pops happening here and we may want to duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, I know way overpowered. We're gonna tone it back in a second. Go linear dodge, add, double click on the layer and we're gonna uncheck transparency shapes layer. That's going to give us this very realistic, explosive color effect, reduce the fill opacity of that a little bit. And we'll go back and reduce the overall opacity of our glows. Uh, just knock them down, down, down. And we may at this point also decide, you know what, we want to add some noise to them as well, just to make them a little bit more realistic looking, something like that. And then last but not least, we're going we're gonna to tone this a little bit and add some color to it. We're going to do the toning by merging all layers to a new layer. Command shift option E, that would be control shift alt E on the PC. Uh, I'm actually going to, I'm going to name this HP for high pass. And I'm going to desaturate it by going image adjustments, desaturate. And I'm going to duplicate it once and I'm going to call this uh, smooth. I don't know if we'll need this or not. We'll see in a second. Let's go to HP here and go filter other high pass for HP and about a five pixel high pass is usually going to do you good five or 10. And we'll set this to the soft light blend mode and just reduce the opacity. It's just going to give a little bit of a kick through the mid tone of the image. You want it to be subtle. Then we're going to come up here to smooth and we will go filter noise, reduce noise. And I'm going to go max reduction of noise here. So I just want it to be really, really smoothed out almost like um, kind of hyper realistic. So strength of 10, we don't really want to preserve much in the way of details and reduce color noise also maxed out, hit okay. 
I don't know what Photoshop was doing, dragging my image around. And you can see it's super duper smooth, like way more than we would want it to be. Let's set this to the soft light blend mode. It's just going to help soften things out. But what it has done is it's really made the image very contrasty and heavy, taking away some of our saturation. So since we know this smoothing's coming, number one, if you don't like the smoothing, you don't have to do it. But in preparation for the smoothing, let's select the HP layer below. Let's add a curves adjustment layer here boost the black point and reduce the white point. So we're just going to reduce the contrast here and then we could add our smoothing on top of that and we have something like that. Now, of course, it has still reduced the overall saturation. So maybe we also go with vibrance or saturation, and just boost that saturation up to kind of an unnatural degree and we can have some of that carry through for us. And then you can go on top of that. You could add a, a little LUT or maybe a photo filter. Maybe we want to add some RNG to this, uh, something kind of like... Something kind of like that. If I preserve luminosity now, I want to not preserve luminosity and go and try setting this to, again, something like soft light. And then we can reduce the opacity a little bit. It's really heavy in the dark parts of the image. So maybe I'll click on this and I'll say, look, for the underlying layer, uh, for the underlying layer here, let's split that handle and just get you out of the darker parts of the image. Uh, just something like that. So we can see there's before, there's after. Just helps lift away from that. And then maybe last but not least, just an overall color treatment, depending on how comfortable you are with uh, toning with either LUTs or gradient maps or curves or whatever. Let's just go color balance, keep it simple here, and add some more blue to the midtones. Uh, maybe add some cyans to the midtones, add a little magenta. You know, maybe add, what if I add some red to the midtones. That gives me like a Disney color palette. Uh, maybe add a little yellow to the highlights. Do I go cyan? Maybe it's just a drip of red there into the highlights. And then in terms of magenta green, I don't know, not much of anything. For the shadows, again, you can just look. What looks good? Do you prefer that grittier, you know, yellow in the shadows? Or do you prefer that more, uh, you know, just heavy blue in the shadow? I'm not sure what I like. Maybe I'll go with a couple drips of, just a couple little drips of blue there. Magenta versus green. I think I'll go with a little green in my shadows. And then cyan versus red. I kind of like, I kind of like the red there in my shadows. And you can see there's before, there's after. So we just really clean up, change the way the image looks. There's so much you can do with this, uh, but it's just up to you now to have fun with it and take and apply this effect to any type of image that you like. Well, that's going to be it for this tutorial, folks. If you did enjoy this one, I did mention in the video something about learning uh, better color matching and matching in composites. I actually used this same exact composite image in another tutorial I did all about matching color and saturation and contrast and just everything we just did in the video. If you want to just take a little peek, a more in-depth look, you can click on the tutorial that's appearing on the screen now. And of course, if you enjoyed the tutorial, subscribe to the channel so you never miss any tutorials like this in the future. And a quick reminder that I love all the people, but especially people like you who stay till the end of the video. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds in Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.